This is my disc destroyer. It's a mean little machine with one job, testing grinding discs. With so many grinding discs and countless reviews, it's hard to separate fact from fiction. This is where the disc destroyer comes in. It cuts through the noise, delivering real results. No bias, no sponsorships, just cold hard tests. Grinding discs can face a lot of real world challenges, like high and low pressures, hot and cold materials, and of course, fast and slow speeds. This machine tests it all, so that we can finally find the truth in the reviews. Today I am testing the Hercules Fiber Disc, coming in at $1.99. It has a bunch of reviews, most of which are positive. Like these, saying it's a weld ripper, has good durability, and eats metal like a beaver through a tree. But how good can a $1.99 disc actually be? Especially with others saying that it doesn't last long, and that they only got 3 minutes of use out of it. We're gonna have to test these discs to find out. Let me break this down for you. Each disc will be grinding this test bar to see how much it can remove within 20 minutes time. This will chart out its story, and tell us exactly how this disc behaves based on how much material it removes at any given point. But if the disc stops effectively grinding the bar, or just straight up disintegrates, the test is over. Let's begin! You know the phrase, let the grinder do the work? Well, a grinder is about 4 pounds, so I started off with that exact weight on my rig. When the test started, the disc removed material at a slow and steady rate. It lasted almost 6 minutes before the disc glazed. The Hercules had taken off about 5 inches. This review claims that it rips through welds, so let's put it to the test. To do this, I preheated the first couple inches of a test bar. This will simulate the disc's contact with a hot weld. And so the test began. I was hopeful this was going to break in the disc, but it actually made it perform worse. In the same amount of time, it took off an inch less than the cold test. These discs stopped removing material because they were glazing. It had lost all of its ability to cut. So I'm going to have to change one of the test variables to overcome this, and hopefully get a performance that aligns with the good reviews. So I added more pressure, and doubled the weight from 4 pounds to 8. And when I ran the test again with the room temperature test bar, the disc improved. It ended up not lasting as long, stopping at 5 minutes but also took off close to 8 inches. I had to stop the test due to the disc not cutting off any more material because it had lost all of its cutting abrasive. I wondered if there was a way to improve the disc performance even more. I decided to push the disc harder by simulating a hot weld. So I added the heat, and the disc started cutting at the same rate as in the cold test, and lasted 5 minutes, the same as the previous test. But it performed worse, taking off slightly less material from the coupon. All of the disc's abrasive had been torn through once again. Heat appears to be this disc's downfall. So what can we take away from this? Well this disc is $1.99, so it seems these reviewers felt they were getting their money's worth even if it did not perform the best. I would say that the reviewers that gave it 5 stars were using heavy pressure on cold metal, and the bad reviews were because of them grinding on hot material with light or heavy pressure. If you'd like to see the data I've collected for this disc, as well as the other discs in these tests, I've posted them at the Fireball Forum, linked in the description. I'm gonna keep posting more and more of these test videos, so stay tuned to find the truth in the reviews. And if you're wondering why I built the rig the way I did, how it works, and what it's all about, I have a video that goes into great detail that you should check out. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.